Back at the table. We're gonna look at the CGS Psi 6 suppressor that just came in. This box apart, that's the end of those. And we'll pop out the device. All right, so what, is, what do we get? We got the suppressor itself. It's got a, a, an end cap. We can remove it and place a different end cap on it if we wanted to. Muzzle device down here. So you get a muzzle device and then you get the suppressor. This is a direct thread mount. So one of the first things you want to do when you get a new suppressor is to weigh that thing before you shoot it. Now you might ask why. Well, that's because after you've shot your suppressor, maybe 3,000 rounds, something in that neighborhood, you want to weigh it again. And you're looking for a deviation in the weight. If it goes up by an ounce, it's time to drop it in some solvent for 48 hours and, and let it soak. Once it's soaked in the solvent, you take it out, run a magazine through it, and blow out any of the residue that's left over. The next thing we want to do is mount the suppressor. In order to do that, so you don't wind up damaging your weapon, we're going to take the bolt carrier group out, the charging handle, and take that out. So we're going to use this device. We happen to use the one by Wheeler. And you can see this is going to mate up into your rifle as the bolt carrier group normally would. It's going to lock in place. And you've got a, an area that turns back here, so that locks and unlocks. And you'll notice up here on the front, as I turn this, that locks it into place. Place this in here, and you'll see that this makes contact there. You turn it, and it's locked in place. All right, And this has flat sides on it. And so what we'll do now is put that in the vise. And once that's in the vise, we'll be able to do our torque and adjustments on the barrel end of the gun. We removed our old muzzle device. Now we're going to put on the crush washer. And then we're going to put on our CGS device there. And we'll put a little... Well, first we probably need to get a shot of that. Get a little energy drink here. A little bit of torque on it. All right. Okay, so we got that muzzle device on there. Now we're going to put the suppressor on. The muzzle device threads this way, right? Turns to the right, like a typical righty tighty lefty loosey pattern that you're or direction that you're used to the suppressor because it's a direct thread here it's not a quick detach uh, th but this is going to go on and it's going to thread the other direction and one of the reasons behind that is so that you wind up when you're removing this sometimes they can get uh, stuck to the uh, muzzle device and if you're going to apply some force to get this off you want to be able to go opposite of the direction that your muzzle device would be turning to get it off. That way they're not working basically against one another. That'll get us on there nice and tight. So now we've got the suppressor mounted and now we just need to take the rifle off of the upper receiver mount and put it back together. And to get this out of here, we'll turn this and it unlocks. When it unlocks, it just slides right out. You can see the, the locking action there, but just by turning this end down here. Turn that, pull that, pull that back out. Now we'll take our bolt carrier and charging handle and put it back in here. And the charging handle we're actually using on, on this one is the Raidworks Mach 15. It's got a, a gas uh, gasket, rubber gasket that um, we're going to test it out and see how how well it does when it comes to working with our, our gas issues that we might or might not have. All right, so there's that portion. Okay, because we've got the law tactical folder here, uh, you can't put it together like you normally would. Normal normal AR, you would hook the pin to here, bring this down, and then pin this. Uh, what we're going to do first is take the back of the uh, the bolt carrier group and we're going to put that in first and then we bring all of this together 
We're going to press it up, get the front piece in, and put the front pin in and push the back pin in. And now we have everything back to normal operation there. Since we've got the rifle in the shop, I thought we'd go over what's going on right here and why things are the way they are. So we've got an extended arm that cantilevers the light out in front as far forward as we can get it. And this is a mod light operating off the axon, uh, Unity axon switch. This, though, is pushed this far forward so that when that light is activated, you can see the shadowing of the light. That's all the deflection that is coming from the suppressor. So the idea of suppressor shadow is not going to be an issue because you've moved it far forward. Now, if you had it further back, you'd block off light to that side of your operating area. So that's why we push this as far forward as we can. And to prevent light indies, we've got the 100 Concepts uh, scope cap over it and got the shock collar on it to here so you don't have that band coming back and all that mess. And the other thing we've got on here is camo form self-adhesive bandage. And that helps grip the light head. And if you need to get this battery out to recharge it or whatever, you just grab this and it comes off faster, easier because you've got something to grip right in here. So that's what's going on right in this area when it comes to the, the light, the, the light mount, and, and all of this equipment here. Stash might want to see that.